Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my custom date picker mini series, part two of two. So if you haven't watched part one, go watch that now. You'll find a link down below and then come on back. We now join the, yeah, okay, yeah, you get it, okay. All right, so yesterday we built this guy, a little date picker pop-up form, right? Put a value in here. We can make little buttons and make changes. You got that, right? Okay, now we we have the OK button, and then the OK button, all it does is it saves that value in a temp bar, and then it's going to, now we're going to return that value to whoever called it. Now, to make it easy, so we don't have a lot of coding all over our database, we're going to make a global function. So come down here to your global module, or make one if you don't have one. Here's mine. Make this a little bit smaller here so we can see it. Come here. All right. So down here, we're going to make our own public function called get date picker. It's not going to take any values in, but it's going to return a date value. Okay. Now, when we call this function, what it's going to do is it's going to open up the form, right? Do command dot open form date picker f comma, kind of, here's the important part, comma, 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 no, I'm just kidding. All right, when we get over to window mode, you can't see it because it's kind of off the screen here. Let me slide over these little things, right? And window mode, what you're looking for is AC dialog. We talked about this in my message box series, right? What dialog does is, dialog tells VBA, you're going to open this form and you're going to stop. You're not going to do anything else until the user closes that form. And then at that point, the VBA in here can continue on. Now, what does that form do? That form has the user put a date value in a field, right? And then the OK button assigns that value into a temp bar. So here we can grab that temp bar and assign it to the value of the function. So we're going to say get date picker equals temp bars date picker value. That's the only set in the form. So now we can return that value to whoever we want, right? Like a field on a form. So now save it. Debug compile. Always good. Always hand. Always throw in a debug compile every now and then, folks. Right? Let's go. Let's do this field right here. All right. Design view. Now this guy's got a static value in it. So let's go to data and right here. Let's get rid of that control source. Delete. You can put it in the um, in the default value if you want. You can put it down here, equals date, like that. The, di the difference is if it's in the control source, then that field is stuck on that date. It's always going to be today's date. If you put it in the default value, though, you can change it. It just starts at that. All right, and we'll call this here just, you know, some date, whatever. So this guy is current date. Let's change that. I don't like current date. Let's call this uh, just the uh, some date field, okay? So what we can do is you can do it one of two ways. You can make a little button to go next to it, or you can make it a double click event. Let's I'll do it a double click event. Let's make it so it's uh let's make it so it's blue. And this is kind of a training issue. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that when I build forms like like the customer list form, like this guy, it's a training issue that I teach all my users. If you see something that's that shade of blue, you can double click on it and it does something else. Like in this case, it opens up another form, right? Same thing with date fields. You can make it so that you teach your users if it's blue, you double click on it and it'll do, it'll do something. In this case, it's going to open up our date picker form. All right. So in the event on double click, where are you? On double click right there, dot, dot, dot. Now, the way we've got this set up is we don't have to do too much coding in each one of these fields. All we need in here is uh, some date field. That's the name of the field equals get date picker. That's it. That's all you got to worry about at this level. So you can do this to any date field in your database that you want, right? Get date picker handles the work. It'll open up the date picker form. Wait, the user will pick a date, right? Hit OK. It saves it in a temp bar. The temp bar comes back to the function. The function comes back here. And there you go. Save it. All right? Open her up. OK, it starts with today's date. Double click. There's the dialog. One one problem with dialog boxes is they they're, they're like pop up uh, forms. If you've got a multi monitor setup, it could pop up anywhere. And for me, it popped up on a different screen, my my lower screen. 
uh, Sammy, make sure that's on the list for the access team, right? Pop-up form should stay centered over the, the, the application window. That's one thing that's, that's one of my little pet peeves with access. But anyways, we could change the value here, hit okay, and it brings it back into there. See that? Isn't that nice? Isn't that cool? You can do the same thing with a button. If you want to put a button next to it, I do that sometimes too, right? You want to take a little button, copy, paste. I just I just usually make it like this. You could put an icon in here if you want to, right? Let's see here. Let's change this to like DP for date picker. And then if you want to put an image in there, right? There's a little picture. You can hit the dot, dot, dot. You can pick, uh, I don't know. What do we got in here? There's a little calendar picture, right? Like that. You can do this, all right? Stick that there. And if you want to turn off the built-in date picker, what's that under? It's under format, I think, right? Yeah, show date picker. Leave that to never, because it'll it's either never or four dates. Just leave it to never, and then you'll your button will handle it, right? Right-click, build event. Same code goes in here. Some date field equals get date picker, just like that. Save it, close it, close it, and now you've got your own date picker on the wrong monitor screen, <laughs> right? Pick a date, type one in, whatever, hit your other buttons. Hit. You can even put DLOOKUPS in here to find stuff like what's the latest order date, okay, whatever you want to do. It's your form. They're your Legos. Hit OK, puts it right back in there. Okay? You could do the same thing on another form. All right, all you gotta do is just put the coding in, one line of code. Let's do the customer sense field. All right, make it blue, event, uh, on double click, where are you? On, on double click, right there. Customer sense equals get date picker, like that. All right, close her up, open it, double click. Put that there. <laughs> if you save it there, it usually tends to stick. Sometimes it doesn't though. Boom, there's the value. See, double click, there it goes. All right. Now, the nice thing with this also is one of the things that Sammy mentioned is that um, sometimes it's, it's it's a hard time bringing values back to a subform. okay? In fact, in my original date picker template, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, I used a different technique for storing the data back in the form. And that has a problem with subforms. So watch this, design view. Now, you don't have to do this with dates. You can do this with any value you want. Let's say you wanna do it with the quantity field. It doesn't have to be a date, right? Let's do quantity. So like this, we'll do it as a double click event, okay? So quantity on double click right there. We're gonna say quantity equals get date picker. You can rename it to something else, obviously, right? And now, Go to orders, right? Double click. It's putting a date in there. Let's just put a six, right? Hit OK. And OK, it's looking it's looking for a date value. That's fine. We'll put in here one one. Hit OK and boom. It brings the value back here. That's the, the point I'm trying to make is, right? Yeah, it's it's formatted for a date, but you can easily make it just a regular text box. You can put any kind of value in there that you want. But the, the point here is that it brought it back into the subform. See? So Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do, huh? All right, if you want to learn more in the extended cut for the members, we're going to do two things. We're going to make a cancel button. So if the user hits cancel, it doesn't reset the value that's in the, the field that you initially started with, okay? And we're going to add it so that it'll bring the starting value in from that field to the date picker form. So for example, I don't know if you caught it earlier, but if you're starting here and it's 1987, November 1st, and you double click, it's gonna come in here with today's date. So now you gotta go all the way back to find it, right? Okay, so we're gonna make it so it takes this value and puts it in here to start with. And we'll make a cancel button, okay? That's covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos and gold members can download these databases and get access to the code vault. And on my website, I've got a cool template that I built a while back where it's got a simple calendar replacement for the built-in access date picker because there was a short time in there where access had a date picker and then it didn't have one and then they added the new one that it has now. So I built this in that interim, okay? I also have a bunch of cool time pick, uh, pickers with clocks and stuff. And these are all on my website. Here's the address right there. I'll put a link down below. Check it out if you're interested.
And of course, if you like learning this stuff with me, if you're enjoying learning programming with me, come check out my developer lessons. I got hundreds of hours of lessons on my website. You'll find a link right there. Click on it. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments down below. But that, my friends, is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members... Get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use.
the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.